I was just working on a page of landscape design and I realized that I need a pink flower and so I'm going to take this opportunity to show you one of the basic flower looms and this is the daisy loom it's called the easy daisy loom it's metal um, it has spikes these are very easy to use it, and if you want to just get one little flower loom as opposed to all the different brands that are out there and all the new um, they have like nine sizes in one little set if you don't want to buy that many this is a great one to have now these um, are by different manufacturers um, this one is put out by Bates a long time ago uh, before it was Susan Bates it's called CJ Bates and Sons and then it became Susan Bates I believe but even this one is made in Japan so and then this one which I bought without the packaging is made in Italy and now it's rattling and that that brings up one you don't want to drop these especially the I have some Hero Scoville that are blue solid and they're plastic and what happens with those is they pop open um, if you drop them right on their edge they'll pop open and then you have to put all the little wires back in place and put it back together and it can be kind of a pain so when I first saw these, this is, um, was with my mother's stuff, and we've had these, like, probably all my life. Um, but you can see that she didn't open it. And so I kept it unopened and bought another one. Um, and when I first looked at it, I was like, well, wait a minute. How do you make a flower with this thing sticking up in the middle? What you actually do is you use it this way. And the knob it does allow you to hold on to it. The knob will turn the spikes in and out. So the first thing to do is to hold it upside down and get the spikes sticking out. Now I don't know why this is rattling. Um, I did drop it the other day. I hope there's nothing wrong with it. So then, um, let me move this one out of the way. What you do is you leave about an inch of yarn hanging off and you're going to wrap this very simply this is worsted weight yarn I'm using so you hold the yarn to the left of a spike you will go around that spike and then you work to the right of your top spike so on the top you go to the right and on the bottom you go to the left and you're basically winding there are 12 spikes that come out of there I guess you could call them prongs and so where you end up is basically at the beginning with your two strands like this and there's nothing on the other side so there is your flower and it's very easy so then you, you just trim this off so you so these are tails um, hold them in place while you're going to do this next part you thread a needle a tapestry needle and I'll do it um, this way wherever your needle um, you pull your needle in you know go through like that and come up somewhere say you come up here you're going to go under four petals like that then you go back three and under four and that's all you do and I'll fix the light here so you can see this a little better and I'll thread this needle you don't need all that much yarn no, so what you're doing is securing the center and you can either um, work those two tail ends into the stitches that you're going around or I leave them long because you can tie them onto things as well 
so here is um, where my two threads come out. So I'm going to go under here. I'm going to go under four petals. So one, two, three, four. I'm going to come out up here. I'll leave another tail here. And my one tail tried to go up there. But now I'm going to go back three petals and forward four. And you have to make a total of 13 stitches. Now I could have grabbed that one, but I wanted to get the loo make sure I get the loose one. So back three, under four. And you continue to do this all the way around um, and it does equal 13 stitches. And it's so simple. Oops. You want to get all of the little strands of the petals. Now I wrapped it once. You can also wrap it multiple times depending on how far the spikes stick out and how many strands will stay on there. And I try to pull it a little bit tight. Where did that come up? So here and here. And then one more, I believe, makes 13, which puts me back where I started. Now, so then you tie off these back ends, slide them under, and then you can re-thread um, the needle with these loose ends and slip them under there. So let's pretend I've done that. And then you just pop it off of there and get your flower. So that took me about, I don't know, three minutes. And I have the rhododendron for my... Now, if I had wanted to make it more like a rhododendron, I could have done multiple um, strands. I could have used floss. I could have, um, on some of them, I have two by, I think they're by boy. They're only an inch big that are square. So depending on the scale that you're working, but here's a pink rhododendron, and you can see that here is my final um, thread. And I would have worked it through the back and finished it off. And when you do it um, completely, this makes a nice little circle. Very simple, and whether or not you do landscape design, I think these are great. Because, uh, I mean, they're similar to a lucid or a knitting Nancy. Um, you can sit and make flowers and, and have bouquets of flowers around the house. It's a wonderful idea. So this one is the vintage Easy Daisy Loom metal. And um, on this type where it's a wheel with spikes that go in and out, be careful not to drop them on the edge. 